to it hopefully uh, the track won't beat us this weekend and this thing is going to just rip right down the racetrack that's what we're planning on doing we are fired up warmed up ready to go q1 Pomona. zane just said he's ready to go fast i, I agree I'm sure it's gonna be a good racetrack. i think so too looking forward to it got the big old nitro hemi ready to go Everything looks good. Go out here to see what happens. The throttle early is Clay, 3.769 for Josh Hart, 330. Well, as we say in the fighting world, tail of the tape, 056 on the tree, 837, 211, 305, 240, 411 at 207. I don't have to tell you guys if you've been following along very long. 837, that's pretty dadgum good. 211, not too shabby. But the rest of those numbers, eh, not so much. Uh, felt really nice and smooth early. Basically, just went out there and went, whoop, pulled the tires loose. Uh, but progress. It felt like it was closer to making it than what it did in Phoenix. Go back here and take a look at the data and see what it tells us. I mean, that, that right there is like a recipe for a good run right there. It's still fast. Got tire temp right away. So that other, that other one you had up there on the, the RPM? Yeah. The comparison? This one had more RPM than there was, right? Yeah. I mean, it was, what, like it was Well, it's really what it is, is the, the clutch is not going as fast to it. So the motor is going to stay up, which should make it better through this area. I'm, I'm rather surprised to see yeah, it should have kept it from spinning. Yeah. That's giving away a lot of DT, but it should just slide down the racetrack and set up the way he's got it there. It'll make a lot of sense. Saturday morning. Donna and I are just hanging out. The car is ready to go for queue number two. We keep exceeding the limits of traction. Just got to calm this thing down enough to go down the racetrack, so we need to get on the other side of it. When you have loss of traction like we've been having, at some point, you try to just back it up enough until it goes down the racetrack. And that's kind of where Timbo's at right now. He had the car set up to try to run 374, 375 yesterday, but yet the car wanted to run 367. So it's like a balancing act of backing up off of the 
tune up enough not to drop cylinders and not to shake the tires and yet try to go to 74, 75. But the car is not having it just yet, so uh, continue to adjust and make changes. And I believe in these guys and gals, they will make it happen. Q2, coming up. Seven, ended up with a 380 at 328. We will take that. I'm here with one of my favorite people, Mr. Bob Johnson. Y'all have seen him every year when we're here in Pomona. He is a longtime attorney for the Parts Plus. How many years, Mr. Don't Bob? Don't hold that against me. 47 years. <laughs> Well, I don't care what they say about lawyers. He's a he's a good man, and we love having him out here. But I tell you what, Jimmo was uh, pulling his hair out. He's been really, really trying to figure out how to calm this thing down, and he made some wholesale changes in the water box. His 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 fingers were just to go and edit. We need to wait, John. Uh, trying to get this car calmed down. This thing just wants to go fast and. While 380 may not be setting the world on fire, it makes us all smile because he got it calmed down. It stayed on eight cylinders, pretty sure, because it went 328 miles an hour. Good run for Q2. We'll get ready for Q3. With you. Yeah. I saw your hand in there just to go and edit. So, smooth early. Pretty good ways down there. The thing had a pretty good come together on the clutch, like way down there. Okay. Uh, like way further than normal. Oh yeah, that we like way down there. It was like, dang, the turbo spooled up down here about half track. It's down. It did come together pretty good, but it was way down. Good job. Yeah, you know, I I saw some of them guys, you know, drop cylinders, and I'm like, that's the last thing. So what I would do was adjusting my all valve map again yeah. because I said I gotta take a little out of it. Just take I, and I because I took a bunch out of it already. I said I'm gonna just do a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It did hit those stops. Okay. Which it should have, so that's good. 10, 11, 12, they're set to 160. And I didn't the, these are swapped, but I didn't swipe swap them on the sheet and then leave them space and So they were swapped in the back. Okay. Have you ever been so excited for a 380? I, I'm not gonna lie, I really was. I was like, that's awesome. I was Does it excited look good? for it. Yeah. Like everything. It's uh clutch is soft. Yeah. Clutch was way down before it come together. Like it was like turbo coming in way, way down. <laughs> like, wow. Similar. Which I kinda knew. Whereas the other Y'all were sliding it so far down. <laughs> <coughs> got a little cheap jump when it finally did something. Yeah, see how far down that is for you. Yeah. What are you thinking for next round, or do you want a couple minutes? Um, I mean, we'll, um, obviously, we need to pack them all. I'm thinking we'll probably put at least three on the primary and, and at least unlock it. But beyond that, I'm not sure. No worries, I can do that. Pouring that Valvoline. Those who know, use Valvoline. So, warmed up, ready to go. Truth is, we probably should have already been headed up there. A little delay. Apparently, John Force got into J.R. Todd, and there was quite a bit of cleanup to do. Look at, whoa, hang on, John. Hang on, John. Oh, they got together down there. John Force in the wall. 
forces car made a hard left. You can see it black tracking, dancing around, past the finish line, turn left, went on the left side of JR's car. He got the parachutes out and coming back across, hooked the DHL Toyota, and then went into the wall. Wild moment here. An in and out promoter drag strip and the NHRA Lucas Oil Winter Nationals. The two cars getting together down there. You can see. We're sitting on go, just waiting on them to come get us. I have no idea where we're currently qualified. Doesn't really matter. I know we're in. So we got that 380 running while ago. We got some tire smoking runs. So now we got a down the racetrack run that was okay. 380. All right, 328. And then we got some tire smoking runs. So it gives you a go no go kind of gauge. So somewhere, maybe not quite the middle. Just increasing a little bit. Now the track temperature has come up, it's warmed up quite a bit. Don't have no long sleeves on, but I am rambling. But we are ready for Q3 final qualifying session right here at Pomona. Seventy-seven Clay Milliken. That's an improvement at three hundred twenty-nine miles. Y'all all know Bruno, but what you might not know, because you're missing out, not keeping up with the sportsman race, this guy won Phoenix. Yeah, it was a good weekend, Clay. You know, what you, I mean? you remember your sportsman days? I Come on, man. We, we just don't get enough love in the sportsman categories, but we have the same sweat, blood, and tears that goes into. We just don't have the dollar signs that goes into one of these. You know what? I'm going to admit it. I'm a spoiled prima donna driver. I don't even <laughs> have to drive. I don't have to drive the big truck no more. But we've done it plenty. Drawing it plenty. <laughs> Driving that rig out west, let me tell you. It's, it's not an easy drive and working on the thing between rounds and just putting a tune up in it while I'm setting a microphone down. It's, it can be a hectic day. Exactly. I don't know how you do it, both of them all at once, but he won Phoenix. We, Q3, just went 377. What'd you say? 329? 329. Solid so good run. run. Good, solid. The driver's been solid all three runs. That's that's what me and you always talk that's about. That's all we care that's about. All we care about you gotta live up to your end. Exactly. <laughs> hey, you know what I do want to talk about, though, because a lot of people on my channel. I don't know if you realize how big it is that there's now a Bruno in McFlurry, which is the Cletus McFarlane Mustang. Did I you did. know that? I did. You know, as they reached out and actually purchased a unit over in the, in the winter in, in November, and I saw the post he put up with the Bruno Lenko, and he was all over it, man. It's fun. You know what I mean? It's a guy like that who has such big engagement with the yes. fans and the audience, especially the world of YouTube, something that I'm not good with. You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> he does a great job with it, and it's cool to see a Bruno out there going and uh, some people getting some recognition for it. So, Sean, I had to talk to a winner here. This, this oh, guy. Oh, yeah. No, he, uh, he wins all of them. <laughs> uh, how about that? Y'all might not have known that. Uh, Bruno Massel, the Bruno Linko. His dad invented that, and that's where it come from. So very good. It's smooth. Like I say, no, uh, no power quiver, nothing. Yeah, after the last week, it's like, you got to do what you got to do. Everyone's in a similar right. Yep. Oh. Well, I, I was impressed. I mean, when... Austin went 81. I'm like, okay, we stayed in front of him. Yep. And then I looked up there and saw the 77. I'm like, nope. Actually, it's not. Yeah, it's just a week. Yeah. Before she wanted to throw a 367. I was like, eh, that's not good. <laughs> I said, like me. I said, I've been trying to run 367 everywhere. Yeah. It ain't even working. Yeah, she sounds like me. I walked away, you know, I'm like 77, not 24. <laughs> it took us a little while. She was locked up pretty good down there. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that. I'm like, oh, man. I'm wearing the clutch out. Well, 
when I was coasting down. I'm like, okay, come on, come on loose. And a lot of times they should coast, yeah. coast, coast. It'll finally let go, but it just it held on. And they actually pushed me off the track with the steel. Oh, really? Yeah. That ain't smart. No, that ain't smart. I was, I was ready. I'm like, all right, if you're freaking <laughs> yeah. Looks very similar. Yeah, it does. A little bit better though. Yep. Which I mean, we we made some changes. Not like like I told Bruce. Normally, I'd get on a racetrack if I hadn't been so screwed up. This between Phoenix and the first on yesterday, I would have tried it on. 370 yesterday. I don't know if I'm faded, but I think I need to start opening these up. Uh, yeah, it never did really lock up until dang near the finish line. Oh, oh. Yeah, just, I need to get it to run faster. I need to get rid of that. Yep. And then I, it run right there, that make it run 375 pretty easy. Oh, for sure. These flows are driving me nuts because they're, it's like, like these flows here act like they're, they flow more than the ones last year. These here, like, like the second one, like flows less. So you got, I'm like. So some, the first one you got to be like dainty and the other ones. Yeah, it's yeah. just bizarre, right? It's kind of like you want to swap the front flow for the back flow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Folks, that's a wrap on qualifying. Obviously, I'm not at the racetrack. Me and Donna found this uh, place with this little tiny little salad here. Old farmer boys. Not too bad though, huh, man? <laughs> this is like our third time eating here because it's close to the hotel. About the only thing. About the only thing, yeah. So we wrapped up qualifying in the number 10 spot. We go out there and race Mike Salinas tomorrow. We raced him last week, didn't we? I think so. Yeah, I think that's who we raced in uh, Phoenix. Anyway, car's getting there. There's a lot of ET left in it and Jim will get after it tomorrow. Kind of got on the other side of the tune-up. One side from smoking the tires, the other side not going down the racetrack. Now we got it kind of figured out. Anyway, I'll finish this big giant salad. See you guys on race day.